Hello folks, Steve Lentz here with Discover Options. Welcome to this presentation of three market timing reports of the S&P 500 for advanced options traders. Presented materials for educational purposes only and should not be construed as personalized financial advice. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future performance. Uh, these reports will be for Thursday, March 29th, getting ready for Monday, April 2nd. And uh, before we get started with those, just want to ask you to subscribe. That way you get alerted uh, whenever we come out with a new video. And also, we have a free ebook, uh, Simple Steps to Options Trading Success, uh, co-authored by myself and Jim Graham. Just click the link, give us your data, and we'll get that free ebook right out to you. Uh, all three reports look at the current market condition defined in three different dimensions, price action trend and the stochastics situation these three uh, perspectives help create a market condition that we will take into the next three reports so in terms of price action um, Wednesday was a downswing bar and then uh, Thursday was an upswing bar this occurred uh, all while the market was underneath the 50-day simple moving average and in terms of the stochastics we are between 0 and 30 with the uh, stochastics trending downward underneath percent D, the three-day simple moving average. This is a very unique market condition that's only occurred roughly about 52 times uh, since January of 2000. Not that often, not that often, but we're going to show you the statistics as they play out anyway. The first report is the Condor Butterfly Timing Report. Um, this is for folks wanting to sell options premium and uh, uh, in a market neutral type approach. So since January of 2000, we've had roughly 4,570 daily closes of the S&P 500. Now of these, 64.7% have been favorable bars for selling option premium. Why? This is where the actual 21 bar movement turned out to have been less than what was being implied by the option prices. Okay, so not quite two-thirds of the bars, 64.7, uh, were favorable where the market didn't move as much as the option prices were implying. Those are favorable bars. You want to sell option premium when you have that 64.7 going on, okay? So you can flip a coin and you'll have about two-thirds of a chance of catching a favorable bar. Now, our market condition has occurred, as I mentioned, 52 times. Of those 52 occurrences, get this, only 44.2% of those were similarly favorable for premium selling. That's not near as much as the benchmark, okay? So this implies a selling edge that's quite negative, negative 20.5%. That's huge. That's about the worst negative edge I've seen in my years of doing this, I'll tell you, it's very interesting. So be careful if you're doing butters and condors right now. Statistically, it's more likely than usual, far more likely than usual, that this current market condition will end up being an unfavorable one for market neutral option premium selling. Okay? So everyone on alert there. Bull put spread timing report. This is for those wanting to sell put premium, a standard deviation away, 30 days out. And uh, we're going to take a look at the similar market condition and evaluate this. So here we go. Um, as I mentioned, we've had 4,570 daily closes of the SPX since Jan of 2000. Now, of those, almost 83% were favorable bars for selling put premium like that where the actual 21 bar or 30 calendar day downside move was less than what was being implied by the option prices. Okay, so 83% of the time, 82.9% of the time, okay, it works out where you could sell premium down there and the market will not move and hit that short strike where, where it's at. Won't even touch it, 83% of the time. Now, We've had 52 occurrences of this market condition. Of those occurrences, 73% of the bars have been similarly favorable for put option premium selling. So this implies a put option premium selling edge of minus 9.9%. Again, a negative edge here. So statistically, it's more likely than normal 
that this market condition will end up being an unfavorable one for selling out of the money put premium. Is any of this a guarantee? Absolutely not. Okay, you still have a 73% chance of making it where you sell the put premium, uh, but that's just a lot less than normal. Okay, you, you still have a higher than 50% chance, but when you're selling put premium, you need something higher than that to make the approach work consistently. Okay, so that's it for the bull put spread report. Let's go to the likelihood report now. This answers the question, based upon our current market condition and how often it's happened in the past, what is the market likely to do moving forward? Go up, down, or wobble around for a bit? And to answer that, uh, we have to look at the price distribution. And we're going to do that through the use of, of um, uh, price distribution bands. So let me just show you an example here of what we're talking about. We have these five-day bands set a standard deviation away, uh, you know, about a standard deviation away up from the close, and a standard deviation away down from the close, uh, a band uh, to the upside and the downside. The question here is, is over the next five days, is the market going to move up and hit the upper band, go down and hit the lower band, or wobble around? And for every single close uh, going back to Jan of 2000, we've kept these statistics, and, and so we understand then the um, a distribution this way. We do this not only for the five-day band, but also the, uh, let me see here, let me click, go down a second, okay. There we go. We have the 10-day band, and then we have the 15-day band. Okay, we do statistics on all three, and when you look at the report here, you can see that the upper five-day bands are hit 22% of the time, out of those 4,570, the upper 10-day band, 16.4, the upper 15, 15.7, the lower 5-day band, 16.5, 16.7, and the lower 15-day band, 19.6% of the time. So that's how price is distributed. Okay, That's how price is distributed over the course uh, from Jan 2000 to the present. Now, our current market condition and we're including the two that most recently had here. Those were not included before in those 52. Okay, of these 52 occurrences, the upper five-day band was hit roughly the same amount, uh, the same percentage as the benchmark. The upper 10-day band was struck 22% of the time versus 16. So the upper 10-day band is struck more often the upper 15-day band, 24% versus 15, again, struck more often. In fact, all six of the distribution bands were struck more often than the benchmark statistics there. Do you see that? All right, so what this is a painting a picture of is greater than usual market volatility. It's not a guarantee that the market is going to be more volatile. It's just simply showing you that statistically, Looking at these 52 occurrences in the past, a higher percentage of those are more volatile than the benchmark. Okay, so just keep that in mind moving forward here. Now, I do like to separate this out. Uh, if, um, if on Monday, Thursday's high is exceeded, okay, uh, that price pattern, that market condition has occurred 23 times in the past. Of those 23 times, five of the six bands were exceeded in terms of how often they were struck. If on Monday the price exceeds Thursday's low, that occurrence has happened 28% of the or 28 times in the past. Again, five of the six bands were struck more often. Again, altogether a picture uh, statistically greater likelihood of the market being more volatile than the benchmark volatility, uh, uh, you know, in the past. Okay, nothing real here, really here to look at direction in terms of whether the market is likely to go up or down more than just simply having greater volatility in all scenarios. That's what's most likely to occur. All right, thanks so much. I'm Steve Lentz with Discover Options. Thanks for joining us today. Bye-bye.